Hey everyone, Anthony here. Now, we've spent a lot of time in the script editor today, so I thought for, for, for many of you, you'll probably just, this will be old hat, but we're just gonna run through all the features and have a look at some of the neat and handy things in it. So getting stuck in, the very first thing you'll probably notice is your script editor. Whenever you close Nuke and open it back up again, you will see stuff here that you had before. Now, you may be wondering where it's saved. So it's actually saved in, let me bring up this window. It's saved right here on Windows. Uh, it's the script editor history.xml file. It's the same thing in Linux. It's just in your, your home .nuke area. Now I'll just bring this across. Uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can actually see this is where the text is. Now the point at which it uh, comes across is actually when you execute stuff. So let me demonstrate. So up above, I'm just typing in some more garbage. I'll select everything, control enter, and you'll actually see magically that it is appeared out here. So every time you execute this block of code is when it commits it to the, uh, the script editor history XML file. So it means that if you, you have a piece of code there, it's like, what was it? You don't have to worry about opening Nuke. You can just like go directly to it. So that's, that's the first thing. Let's, uh, let's, let's make this window a bit bigger again. <clears throat> so the other thing, if you haven't played around with it is, oh, by the way, um, because we're doing a lot of keyboard stuff, I actually have down in this corner, uh, I'm using Karnak just to show you the keystrokes. So you can actually see literally what I, I'm, I'm typing on the keyboard. So let's see, while we're up here, uh, if we bring up the preferences under the script editor, uh, main thing is these ones, we've already gone through the echo Python commands to the output window, but if you want um, a different font, go through, oh God, um, arg. okay, there's a bit of lag there. Uh, where is it, Korean new, okay. So you can change your font there. The indent, you can change from four to something else. I would strongly recommend leaving it at four because that is actually sort of what you'd expect as a Python standard. The indent will come in handy in a moment because we're about to get into some of the more fancy features. Now you've seen commenting uh, and this kind of stuff. So first thing that comes to mind is you do get basic syntax highlighting in our script editor. So for example, if I just do a loop thing, so for X in Y print, got to remember that uh, Python. So that actually demonstrates most of the syntax highlighting straight up. You get this pinky kind of color for keywords and special things. So let's run a couple others as try, except pass for in, um, there's not one, uh, with. Yeah, so these are all elements of the language which are kind of important. So you will see them highlighted. You will also see, I'll clear those up. You'll also see here, um, for anything that's single or double quoted, low, again, you'll see it change color from gray to uh, I, I'm waiting for a GPU, so my screen's at 420 compression. I think it's red or reddish kind of color, but you'll see it's change color to indicate it's a string. You will also see when we have comments, so using uh, a hash to comment out line, let's put it at the end of it, this prints out some text. You'll actually see that also goes green. So that kind of covers most of the syntax highlighting. One thing that it doesn't deal with is triple quoted strings. So no, this would be a long multi-line comment. Uh, you can see that's actually not handling it very well. So you'll see that when, um, uh, it's fine. You sort of get used to it and you can, generally you're not using a lot of triple line comments, uh, at least not in the script editor. And you, know, you don't worry about that stuff too much. Um, so yeah, that's syntax highlighting, which is super handy. Uh, what else we got? So th th that's the most visual obvious thing. Things that you would have potentially seen me start doing. So let's actually use this block of text here. I'll get rid of that guy. So if I selected this and I wanted to comment it out, I'm pressing control and backslash, as you can see down here, which is why it's all kind of, and everything is commented. That's actually really super duper handy because it means you can be working on something and just go, ah, oh, 
time. Yeah, I don't want to touch that. So you just can comment it out. The way I've been using it and the way I tend to work is uh, full speed. Let me just actually demonstrate. So I'm just going to chuck down a couple grade nodes there and I'm going to close this thing. So let's say I wanted to do something with them. 4x in new call nodes, you know, print uh, next dot full name. Right. So nothing super duper. That will do you what you'd expect. Okay, cool. I've got the full name. And I might be wanting to do something else and I'll just go, oh, maybe I actually wanted to know where in space they were. I'm not sure. Let's just, what was X? I'm thinking, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll be mucking around. But let's say I did uh, X dot name. Okay, so this is very silly. But I don't want to constantly be selecting stuff with the mouse uh, because it's slow. So, you know, and I'm, my arm gets fatigued. So I can be doing this. So I'm holding down shift and I'm selecting an area. Uh, control backslash to comment it out. Control A to select everything and control enter to run it. So as you can see, if, if you're used to working in this kind of way, you can actually take advantage of this. So, you know, like again, uh, oh, I'd like to run this one. Uncomment it, comment out, control A, run the first block of code. Uh, I obviously have hit the nuke non-commercial limit, but that's not important for our purposes here. So yeah, multi-line block commenting is super handy. Now, the curious of you amongst you should have probably asked this question by now. Uh, if I select two lines, it'll comment them. It'll decomment them now. What happens if I select this group here? It will intelligently comment the whole lot and you can see it's doubling it here now if we go back the other way so if i had the same selection reason for this is you can see that it's a reversible action here so i can hit this key as many times as i want and it'll toggle between the two states uh, if you were extra curious you could invert and do that and you'll notice the behavior has changed it's actually decommented the first block so just something that you'll get used to it's actually sort of taking its cue from the first thing it sees in, the, in your selection from the top down. So if the first thing isn't commented, it will go, oh, all right, I got to comment the whole lot and it will comment the whole lot. If the first thing is instead commented, then it's going to guess that it needs to uncomment everything. So it'll uncomment the whole lot. You also don't need to select everything. You can just select a single character in the line and it will understand what to do. And you can also, wait, no, <clears throat> no, you actually do need to select something. Otherwise it doesn't know what you want to work on because uh, the, the cursor just blinking around here could, could mean anything. So that doesn't do anything. You actually have to select one character and that's all you have to select and it will do the rest for you. So that's actually super handy for multi-line type stuff. And similar with multiple selections, um, remember earlier we mentioned about tabbing and four character spaces. You'll notice this is four spaces here. It's basically a standard. Um, you'll, you'll see it everywhere. So please don't deviate from that one. Tab is your friend in this case. So the same way we're looking at it. I've selected these two lines and I'm hitting the tab key and it's just moving across to the right. I'm hitting shift tab and I'm now detabbing things. So it's tabbing and detabbing. And while we're here, the tab character actually is super useful. So you'll obviously be used to it in the node graph where you'll hit tab and you'll get your list of things here. It's actually got a similar kind of use in the script editor. So let's clear that up. So we had X was the grade. Now I, a lot of the time, will not have reference material up in front of me. I'll just do it based upon stuff I remember. Don't remember everything. So previously we demonstrated the entire help function. So you can look at help on a function. But with the script editor in Nuke, X is a, uh, it's a grade node. So we know it's a node. All right. We know there's functions on it that I want to use. Like I want to get all the knobs. I happen to know the function is called knob, but maybe I've forgotten. Maybe I'm being forgetful today. You can hit dot. And if you hit tab at that point, it's going to do some introspection. 
and it's going to give you a list of all the things that think you could possibly want. Uh, now, this is too many, but much like the tab over here in the node graph, if you just start with K, your tab, it will tell you, well, there are only two functions that match what you've asked me to find. Do you want knob or do you want knobs? And so, so, so you can, again, get pretty quick at this. X, K, N, tab, you know, that's, uh, let, me, let me do it something with, um, I think X, uh, let's do it with all the A's here. So, for example, there's add callback, add knob, all knobs, auto place. So I know it's auto place. Great, I've hit tab. There's no other option, so it's just completed the whole thing for me. Uh, so if what else do we have there? A something. So I can use up and down keys and just move through. Once I'm done, hit enter. It'll complete it. I believe A dot. So you can also hit tab. So exactly the same behavior as you got over here. So grade tab again. It'll make the grade for you. Uh, unlike the tab menu here, it will not actually find the most common thing. It's always going to be alphabetical. But that is really a super useful function. And it's also probably why you'll see me doing things like this, where I will assign. So in this case, it's a node. So let's just grab, um, what was this? This was uh, grade four. Okay, so grade four. All right. <clears throat> So on grade four, I can also assign garbage variables. Like I just want to grab hold of it. So Y will be, um, let's get the knob called black, right? Oh God, I can't type today for some reason. Okay. So on Y, I can see all these things. These are all parameters, or sorry, not parameters, functions that you can apply to a knob. So obviously you can um, clear it's animated, you can set some keyframes and some other stuff. This one I would go to the reference guide and read through because I'm, I don't remember that much. <clears throat> but what you'll notice is that I couldn't do this. Right, this doesn't help because Newt doesn't understand what this is because the result of this call here, it could be a knob. We know it's going to be a knob, but maybe it's not going to be a knob. Maybe the function will explode because you know, that is not going to give me a knob back. That's going to give me nothing. So there's no functions that can run on it. Uh, same thing with different types of knob. You'll see different um, different functions that are available for, say, a, um, I don't know, uh, uh, like a, a 2D slidery kind of knob versus a, a text knob or versus a pie script button. There'll be different things you can do, which means this uh, introspection here, it won't be able to give you with any confidence what, what it should be. So that's why you'll possibly notice where I'll assign to a variable. Uh, in this case, we know it's a none value. So if I hit Y and hit tab, it's given me something that's like, I can't do much. I can do all these things and none of them look like what you're after. It's like, I wonder why. Oh, I have mistyped stuff. Right, let's fix that. So, and hit them again. And now I can see all the uh, functions I've got. So yeah, this is probably one of the things that I actually really enjoy working in the script editor here. Like I, I treat it like a gigantic text editor with a whole bunch of handy dandy functions that I, I use when just mucking around. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a few more things to play around with if you weren't already aware of them. There are many extensions that um, you might already be using, but it is sometimes kind of fun to see how far you can get with just what comes out of the box.